Good evening, folks. This is gonna be a, a guide, more like a walkthrough on how I managed to fund my own uh, Omega, the 500 Plex, to fund my own Omega, uh, solely by doing only tier 2 exotic abyss with the worm. Uh, before we start, uh, there will be timestamps on the video description and I need to point out two initial things. First, uh, English is sadly not my my first language. It's rather my second second language. So sorry for any mispronunciations or if I'm speaking rather too quickly. I'm quite nervous. Uh, the second consideration is that this is my first time doing a tutorial video, uh, recording my voice as I'm playing. So I might not speak as fast or I may speak too fast because I'm actually paying attention to the game so let's get right to the point then first let me show you my fit this is my worm fit that I that I came already <laughs> got a bit nervous here okay this is the worm fit I I built myself for the purpose of farming T2 exotic uh, abyss uh, filaments and it's the the curious thing is that it is an alpha friendly fit and as you can see it's not that expensive for a worm fit uh, I've run rather uh, more expensive fits that unfortunately recently I lost thanks to a uh, extremely rare uh, Tessera wrecking hit at over 20 kilometers yeah those can happen but anyways let's get to the point I'm gonna explain the modules I'm using and exactly why I'm using them first and foremost the small shoot booster 2 this fit it's not a tanking fit rather it's a kiting fit that's why I have the micro warp, warp drive its sole purpose is to stay away from any dangerous spawns that might appear in the abyss. So you won't actually need too much uh, shoot booster. Uh, you might already have noticed that it is not a stable fit. But the secret here is that you won't need to keep using the micro warp drive and the shoot booster at the same time, most of the time. So you have three minutes to use them together but you will mostly be using it like this you will be kiting your enemies so it is quite a stable fit taking this into consideration it's a fit that can kite anything in the abyss it's even Damovix with their they're extremely fast but somehow this fit can kite them uh, as you can see the hawk is really f uh, the worm is really fast even faster than the hawk I think the hawk might have some some problems trying to evade Damovix, especially in the anchoring one. But the worm doesn't have this issue. I've never lost my my worm because of an anchoring Damovix, anchoring, starving, any of them. They never manage to to get close enough to activate their abilities. So next in the line is the Republic F Fleet small cap battery. Uh, this one is quite necessary and you can actually you can actually infuse it with a mutaplasmid. I have one here, uh, this that I was using, uh, this one. Uh, if you can afford it, I, I recommend using this. Oops, it's on simulated. I recommend using a mutaplasmid. Just keep in mind that it might ruin the battery and the battery itself is quite expensive but as you can see it gives a boost to the capacitor and it, it's quite good but it, honestly it's not necessary that's why I'm showing you the normal battery so you can see that it works without the infused battery so let me find it Republic here okay this one is a weird one some people might say you shouldn't uh, I don't know the proper terms to use because I'm I play Eve by just a bit over a month, almost completing two months. 
so I don't know much of the terms but I know exactly why I'm using this shield extender uh, I just recently lost my my quite expensive worm fit to a strike grip to Sarah wrecking hit at over 20 kilometers as you can see it, it, this damage it basically basically did in just one shot I didn't know that could happen I, I actually I did heard it could happen but I I didn't believe it was possible until it happened to me so the reason why I use extender rather than anything else here it is it's because the shoot extender will allow me to survive a wrecking hit coming from the Tessera coming from the Charybdis Tyrannos and the Twilight Overmine or Twilight it doesn't have an H in there but I think it's Twilight Overmine so the, the thing is you will survive the wrecking hit and you will manage to recover the HP loss because wrecking hits are quite rare especially from these three types of enemies that miss a lot this fit they miss almost all the time so that's why I have this shoot extender here. Some people might criticize, might say that, oh, it's better to use, a, a, for example, a dissipation. Let me search here. I, I even have one, thermal dissipation. But the shoot extender uh, will work greatly for this kind of surprise coming from the Tesseras. Especially because the the Tessera can spawn dealing any kind of damage. They have all the four types of damage that they can spawn with. So the shoot extender, it's more of a omni resistance rather than just one type of thermal dissipation. And the the shoot hardener will use more of the capacitor. And I think it won't be enough CPU to use it. So that's why I'm not using it. The rest is basic, drone damage amplifiers, because Worm is a drone boat, the small capacitor control circuit, because I need capacitor, it's good to have that extra recovery, and the uh, EM should reinforce it too, to fill up that gap hole that the Worm has in EM damage, and I prefer a thermal shoot reinforcer, because the enemies that will hit you the most will be the Triglavians, Damovix, Lashax, and Vedmax. They are the most dangerous foes that we will face. <laughs> the missiles I use is the, the launcher, the Arbalest Compact Light Missile Launcher, with Caldera Navy Scourge Light Missiles, because we will be running uh, exotics. So without further ado, uh, let's try it out. And sorry for taking so long. Uh, I'm, as I said, I'm kind of nervous recording this. I will be doing three consecutive runs. Hopefully, hopefully we run into the Vedmac, which honestly for me is the the boss room in Tier Two Abyss. Uh, the other one that's quite rare is Starving Lashak, but if you know how to deal with him, he's quite easy actually. Right. So, for those who don't know, I create a, a safe spot. I think you can Google on the Eve University how to do this. It's basically a, a point that that you can't uh, warp drive without having it marked previously. So it will be a, a more safely, but people can search you and find you here. But like I said, it's a worm fit, and a worm fit it's not that expensive. So I don't think. Uh, I've run about 300 Abyss runs and I've never been ganked because I use frigates rather than cru expensive cruisers. So let's get into the Abyss. For those who, no, do, who don't know, you need to be in a fleet. So you will uh, select pilot and there will, be, uh, there will be an option here to form fleet with. Uh, solo fleet and you need that's weird it's gray I don't recall it being gray okay 
So you need three filaments for a frigate run because it was intended to have three fleets, uh, three frigates at the same time. But the worm can solo it quite easily, actually. All right, let's get to it. A bit nervous here. Well, let's show you guys my little worm fit in action. Okay, the first room will be Caribdis Tyrannos. Oh, with the blue fog, which increases my my signature. Oh, she actually hit me. But as you can see, uh, it's not so much damage, and we can take it. So the first thing here is we're gonna have to deal with the entanglers. They usually you don't want to let them get so close to you. As you can see, they didn't activate the uh, what is it called the the webbing. So I send my drones after them while attacking with my with my missile launchers. And I keep spiraling the Charybdis Tyrannos. You don't want to click orbit her yet. You want to keep spiraling. As you can see, even in the fog, with three times, 300% uh, my signature radius, she is not hitting me. Alright, first, first one is gone. And we will keep circling. While trying to avoid them, they usually have a, a 10 kilometer range. But uh, since they are entangled, they are not so dangerous. My, my problem here if it was the spear fisher, which can disable my micro warp drive. Alright, second one down. You keep spiring her. Manoring pilot. Honestly, now I feel safe to orbit her at 500 meters. It feels like she, she just hit me. But she did it. Alright, here we are. Now she can hit me. Even if uh, I disable my micro warp drive, I'm, as EVE players used to say, uh, I'm below her guns. And I disable my shoot booster. Because I don't need it right now. I'm used to my other f uh, Omega feet that's stable. That's why I didn't disable it before. And I forgot my missile launchers. Quite hard to play and comment at the same time. But here we are. Um, Alright, it's gonna take a bit, uh, a bit of time. I usually run uh, augmented hornets. I felt like they are better, even if they don't deal solely kinetic damage. It might be just me. But since they have more HP, better tracking, I didn't feel any uh, that they were worse. Honestly, I felt they were a bit better. So if you have the ISK, I recommend the augmented ones. I'm using the normal Hornet too because it's the most cheap and I think that's what you guys are searching for. A cheap feat to farm your Omega. Alright, she's down to the, to the hole. Now, uh, on my Omega fit, I tend to go after the extractions because it's a, like this one is a micro warp drive. But the main point is that uh, my Omega fit has a lot more DPS, around 250, while this one has to 20 to 20. So I will be destroying her and going only after the bio biocombinative cache, just to save more time. She's almost gone. I'm gonna go after the bio. And there we have it. First room clear. Always remember to, ret uh, to recall your drones. Losing drones because of this is quite painful. Especially the worm that has a limited uh, drone bay. A quite limited drone bay. Here we are. 6,900,000, I think it's right, I'm terrible with English numbers. Okay, reloading, recall drones, next room, let's see what we get. And just under 5 minutes, get into... There we 
here we go. Next room. This one is an easy one. Yeah, it's the drone room. Usually you want to see if you have any deviant automata. I forgot the rest of the name. But it's the tower that destroys drones. It's, uh, since the worm gives a boost to your own drone's HP, you can orbit it and the tower will destroy these drones or at least damage them quite a lot. <coughs> since we don't have it, we have to deal them one by one. Or like I do, I target one with the missiles and target another with the drones. Not sure which form is better. Like I said, I'm uh, quite a new EVE player, not even two months, but this one month and a half I've been doing almost exclusively Abyss runs. So at least I can say that I'm a good Abyss runner for T2, Tier 2, not sure about the other ones. See, you don't need a shoot booster active all the time. All you need to do is kite. And most enemies won't even scratch you. These ones you can keep at range. But I usually prefer to manual pilot. Just because, no actual reason. A good thing to do also, if you can. Since we have micro warp drive and drones, you can actually go after the cache, the extraction nodes, as long as you can keep attacking. For example, now um, I lost target and I think my drone stopped attacking. Yes, they are idle. So sadly, that uh, extraction is too far away for me to do that. But sometimes you can keep attacking, the, attacking them and go after the loot. Let's go after the biocache. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. I hate when the command don't don't work properly. So, almost everything done, only the field weaver left, and another 3 million. Recall the drones, I won't be going after the, the extractions. But usually you can get around 1 million to 2 million from the extractions. So if you can keep attacking the enemy and go after them, it's a good source of income also, a good way to boost your profit. Alright, next room, next room and the last one. Charybdis Tyrannos, this time with Spearfishers. You've got to be really careful around these guys. I know I'm going into the blue f uh, fog, but don't worry. I won't actually stay inside it too long. Alright. Spearfishers are a bit close, but they are not activating their ability. Oops, I forgot my drones. I'm quite nervous here. There we go. Just keep circling around the Caribbean's Tyrannos. And avoiding them, of course. Spearfishers have the warp scramble, so they are quite dangerous. I would recommend you to keep a little bit uh, more distance from them, just for, for guarantee. Once you get more... Uh, how can I say... Custom, custom to them, you will know the distance you can actually approach them or not. Even sometimes getting with within range. But you should try to avoid it at most if possible. Not forgetting my missiles. The point here, if a noob as I can do this, you guys with more experience can easily make a lot of profit here. Only 
only two spear fishers left. They are trying to kill my drones. At least one of, one of them. Oops. Let's disable the shoot booster. Let's recall this drone that's dying. You gotta be careful with these. Let's see. Yeah, exactly that. Thank God she missed me. Well, I will orbit her right now. The warp scramble won't hurt me enough here to make a difference since I'm right below her guns. And let's send the other drone. And here's the warp scramble. Let's see. Let's increase my transversal against her because she will start uh, hitting me if she back away a lot. But there we go. Nothing too serious. And remember to activate your warp drive because when they disable it, it doesn't activate uh, by itself once you kill the warp scrambler. You can overheat your guns here to get a bit more DPS, especially against the, the Overminds and the Lucid Deep Watchers who are quite tanky, especially if you're running out of time. But remember to keep, uh, to keep paying attention to the damage meter there. You don't want to burn your stuff. I will disable because I want to run multiple runs after this one without returning to repair. As you can see the bonus the worms pro the worm provides to the hornets it's quite enough for them to stay below a, a deviant automata suppressor. Disable the shield that I forgot. As you can see, the fact that the feet it's not stable, it's not really important. I even forgot it active, but it didn't, didn't really matter. Let's go after the biocache. Recall my drones. There we go, 7 million. So without a million I got uh, 200 million. 200, what I'm saying. Uh, 18 million I got from this run alone so personally I feel that the tier 2 frigate runs are way better than the tier 3 cruiser runs because first the filaments are way cheaper even if you have to activate 3 at a time it's way cheaper than activating just one tier 3 filament and second because the loot over uh, most of the times it's always better okay so now we are back in New Eden we gotta have to wait this portal to close so we can activate another one I won't even bother to repair my drones you will see that this feat can tackle tier 2 abyss quite easily oh and just to prove that uh, I'm an alpha account. Here we are. Alpha account. Alright, let's go to the next run. Agitated Exotic. Activate for fleet. And let's roll. Hope to get the Vedmag, Vedmag spawn. That's the spawn that I feel that it's the most dangerous. 
that's the spawn that I actually need to show how to deal with. First room, let's see. Oh, blessed. The Sarah. I hate these guys. So, for the Tesseras, I use the Caldera Navy Hornet. They have way more HP than the normal Hornet. Even though they have a bit less DPS. Because the Spark Ripped, the Tesseras overall, they wreck drones. They wreck anything that's close to them. But some drones they can actually one shot. And if you lose your drones, you lose your DPS and it's game over. So let's keep range. Let's fire. There goes the drones. The secret here is to keep keep attacking, uh, sending the drones after him. Once you see that yellow box, that means that he's targeting your drones and stopped attacking you. You recall your drones. It can show here also. You don't need to keep looking at it at them. So the moment I see the yellow box, I will recall my drones, wait for them to target me again, and then I send my drones after them again. And always uh, be aware of the distance. You don't want them uh, around 10 kilometers around you. Always 20 kilometers or more, just to be safe. They are taking quite a, some time to redirect to the drones. Let's see if I can kill him without them redirecting. And there we are. I won't recall my drones now because they are he's almost dead. But as you can see he wrecks drones. There we go. Almost lost my drone there. Just try to haste a bit. Usually you want to recall as soon as you see the, the yellow box. That's the most safest way. I will be manuing piloting here because I'm near the border. But as always, try to avoid being under 10 kilometers, or he will wreck your ship. There we go. Here we are again. Keep at range. Uh, oh no, I'm using my missiles. Open. Uh, there we go. The yellow box. I'm returning my drones. Let's see. There we go. Now he gets red boxed again. That means he's firing at me. Usually you can stay around uh, 20 kilometers, 20, 21 kilometers, because uh, you shorten the distance that your drones have to travel when you are recalling them. So it hastens a bit the. The whole, the whole recall and send him again. He's almost dead. And there we go. Double Tessera's down. If you know how to deal with them, they are usually quite easy. Uh, it's the first time you face them without knowing how to deal with them. That's the pain in the ass and of course that miraculous wrecking shot at over 20 kilometers I uh, forgot to see how much I got there but I think you guys saw let's reload and next room let's see if we get the fat mac the boss room of tier 2 abyss Anchoring Damavix and Harrowing Vedmak. This is actually the boss room. It's the most dangerous room you can get in this run. So, as you can see, the Damavix are fast as fuck. I'm gonna stop my ship with control space just a bit to get in range. And now I'm gonna start to tear down the Damavix. I forgot to use the Hornets too. I'm a bit nervous recording this. But it won't be an issue. The DPS is not there that different. As you get close to the wall, to the border, you want to click completely to the side to avoid it. Don't worry if you get a bit off. The unstable abyssal depths doesn't have 
that much of a dangerous DPS as long as you don't stray too further away. So as you can see, damage wasn't really dangerous. They are really close, but like I said, the worm can kite the Danadex. I don't know if because of their AI is a little wonky or not. And as you can see, the Vedmech is trying to shorten the distance. You don't want the Vedmech closer than 20 kilometers, or else it will wreck your ship. Its DPS is huge. It's the most damaging uh, enemy in the abyss, I think. My drones change targets on their one uh, on their own will but I would re redirect and the Vedmech is approaching because I clicked wrong so let's focus on the Vedmech now like I said don't let he can, he can get closer than 20 kilometers now you will need to control your ship a bit here manually to keep the distance so you can control your velocity your speed so I want the red man a little bit closer. I have an issue with the targeting range because of my Omega status has a, a bit more range. So there we go. We keep this steady distance and tear down the vet mech. Just keep an eye on the anchoring. There we go. He's approaching. He's approaching. Let's kill him first, shall we? Oh boy. Oh boy. We are in danger. This is bad. This is quite bad. I should have targeted the, the anchoring damage first. But as you will see. You can tank a little bit. Now let's try to get away from this little monster. Ah. I need over 20 kilometers before his damage gets too high. Oof. There we go. This was mainly because of pilot. I'm quite nervous recording this and I should have have targeted the anchoring first but it was a, a great moment of tension good for the video and I, it show you how much this feet can tank a vet man as you can see I tanked quite well though some of the tanking was signature tanking since my warp drive was off uh, my signature wasn't so big and I, he was missing quite a lot of shots and here he is again. Yeah, chatting and playing at the same time doesn't work. <laughs> but this is the boss room. We just cleared it with a lot of rookie mistakes. So this just shows that this fit is enough to handle tough situations. It can handle a vet map even if you get warp scrambled. Uh, curiously enough, this never happened to me before. This is the first time something like this happened. <sighs> Quite nervous here, but like I said, uh, uh, what's the term? I'm quite confident in this fit. It took me a bit of time to come up, came up with it. Uh, lost some ships, but. It, He's the one that got me my Omega all by itself. I recall the drones, I reload the missiles, and next room is able to shoot. Alright, next room, blinding oh Villa Damvix. This one is quite a dangerous room. But I'm gonna teach you a little secret here. Not sure uh, how many people know this. You're gonna as soon as you enter this room, you wanna back off immediately. 
back off immediately towards the the abyss border and i'm gonna show you a little trick on how to deal with the villa swarmers which can and will kill you the secret here is simple just get near the abyss and hear the popcorns Any minute now. Pop. There we go. There we go. And now we have a simple Villa Demovic spawn. That's quite easy by itself. Though. Let's get still stay near here because they have more drones in their base. There we go. They just relaunched them. Let's not stray too far because there is an anchoring. We don't want to be anchored outside the abyss. There we go. We can even stop a little bit. You don't need it actually to stray uh, to go outside the abyss. As you can see, the drones will go outside by themselves and start to die. Warp scrambled, but the Villa Damovic's damage is quite low. I think they have one, one, uh, twenty percent of the damage of a normal Damovic. I'm terrible with English numbers. My apologies. It doesn't really matter which one you target now. Like I said, they are dangerous, and their drones are still going outside the Abyss. the last room. Yes, this is the last room. Uh, if there's an Deviant Automata Suppressor, you can also use it to kill the drones, but it usually takes a bit more time rather than using the Abyssal Depths. I find that the Abyssal Depths clear them way more easily and quick. And there's all rooms have the Abyssal Depths. Uh, the like this room it doesn't have the automata suppressor so if you rely on solely on that you would have died on this on this room the shoot booster too simply isn't enough to tank all those drones especially with uh, the subpar low resistance since this fit has so there we go Let's get the bio. We have plenty of time left. Seven minutes. Usually in the last room I like to go after the ca the nodes. Just because it's not actually better if you plan on doing a lot of abyssal runs. But us usually I do one or two and go do another thing. Or else I get bored. There we go. Let's see, the drops, recall my drones, which I forgot again to use the normal hornets. Seven million, already at 33 million, without going after the, the extraction nodes. So it was around 16 to 15 million per run. Forgot the shield. Getting signed. Don't know why sometimes it fails like that. Alright, we are going to our last run on this walkthrough. On this honestly pathetic walkthrough. I've done so many mistakes so far that I. <laughs> but like I said, I'm confident on this fit. It's a error friendly fit. And. Agitated Exotic. As you can see, no ganks. I don't think people ganks frigates. It's just not worth it. There we go. Let's reload the missiles. Hornets. That's the preferred group to launch. 
and let's go for a last run. Let's see what we get. I hope we get a star villa shack for me to so show you how to deal with them. But it's basically the, just to approach them. Even if they drain all your energy, you just try to get more transversal against them. And since they die so quickly, uh, there won't be enough time for them to, to hurt you badly. Even if they are two. The shacks are honestly... I really like to get them because they die so fast. Uh, unfortunately, there's no suppressor. I got inside them. Jesus Christ, my FPS is going crazy right now. Oh boy. I hope it doesn't crash. There we go. I uh, forgot my drones, as always. There we go. Yeah, recording from a notebook uh, at high settings isn't exactly the best thing. Oh god. So many rookie mistakes. Just three runs. Well, like I said, this is my first time recording and talking at the same time, so apologies. You should always look forward. Always. Keep a distance, you can keep track of it on their distance here, on the overview. But always look forward because if you get if you don't see the abyssal depths border soon enough with a micro warp drive active, you will die. The damage gets insane the further you stray for it from the border. Let's disable this. Let's just spot. Ah, we'll try to demonstrate here. Uh, my drones will keep attacking them because of the range and I will try to go after the... Ah, this one. This one is good. As you can see the drones or after them, and I'll use the missile to pop the node. This way you don't actually lose time looting these secondary nodes. And it's a great way to, like I said, to increase that profit. There we go, almost one million. Let's see if we can get another one, and, but I don't think so. No. Better not. left uh, honestly I think I can go after that one I might lose a bit of time but since the drones room it doesn't take much to begin with and there we go try leaving extraction Let's see what you hold. Almost one million again. And let's go back. Wait, I don't think. Oh, almost forgot the bio. Now that would would be a rookie mistake. At least I didn't lose any drones yet. I usually don't, because like I said, I usually run the augmented ones, which are quite expensive to lose. A kicking or a blueprint, excellent, and 5 million. Some good loots to demonstrate the run. Let's go to the next room. Disable the shield. Like I said, you see, the fact that the fit isn't uh, stable isn't that important. Uh, you get enough capacitor to even commit this rookie mistakes that I'm doing right now. Next room, blinding Villa Demix. 
like I said, retreat. As soon as the, as the border shows, you click Control Space. It should be enough to stop right before you go up. Uh, I actually got over it, but like I said, it's not important. The damage is quite low. There we go. It popped almost instantly. But let's stay near the border because of the extra do drones they carry. stop and now we just deal with the dumplings there's a node nearby which I will go after after their extra drones pop as you can see they always go outside the border. The Damavex don't. The main enemies, I don't think any of them go outside. The, just the drones. And I hope it stays like that, because I, honestly I think this is the, the only counter to this fit. Might not be. You might be able to kill them enough, because if you kill the Damavex, the drones stop working. After the air drones, quite bad. There we go. Let's see. Hope I get one with at least two million. Nah, one million. Can't complain. Uh, the capacitor, not an issue. You can actually go after the the nodes on this on this spawn because they will keep following you. As you can see, I'm still applying DPS with going after the nodes, so it isn't wasted time. the other one then which is right there one of my problems manual piloting is that it is there's such a long delay to recognize the command let's uh, I'm clicking right now as you can see around three seconds for it to recognize my command this is quite terrible when you have a fit that relies a lot on manual piloting but you get used to it. Not sure if, if it is just me or everyone else. There we go. Just a bit over one million. It's almost dying. Bio cash. There we go. Bio cash. Recall my drones. The next one will be the last, I think. Oh, there was a Deviant, Median Rage Deviant. But like I said, I always prefer to go to the border. Uh, it pops the, the Villa Swarmers way easier. And helps you keep the practice. good quantity but nothing too impressive next room reload capacitor fools maybe we get the leshak room I think is the only thing missing on this run dangerous that mean I mean and be 
behind. Ah, a drone spawn. Ah, quite sad. Whoops, wrong hotkey. And there we go. Keep the distance, fire missiles. So, like I showed, this feat is a kiting feat. It can outrun anything that da that's dangerous. Uh, energy neutralizer ships, the anchoring, though I made a, a small mistake back there, but as you saw the, against the first one, I can actually outrun them. So you don't have to worry about the, the VEDMAC getting close to you, unless you commit a rookie mistake like I did. But like I said, I'm a pretty new EVE player. Uh, I don't know if I can if I can show it here. Uh, one second, brain freeze. I was born on April 22, so I'm quite a a new Eve player. Well, like I said, if a rookie like me can do this with this feat, more uh, better players will surely do it easily. And if you're not, if you're a rookie like me, since I showed how to deal with it, you don't have to lose stuff to learn it. You already know how to deal with most of the difficult spawns. Anything that's big, for example, the Twilight Overmind, the Charybdis Tyrannos, you just approach them with the spiral technique that you let me demonstrate here instead of clicking them and doing orbit you click a bit far away this way you increase your transversal and they won't hit you or at least will miss uh, quite often yeah I don't know why I backed away but let's go back there and get the other one a lot of time I actually have subpar uh, missile skills. I have good, uh, reasonable drones one, but missiles, as you can see, specialization not too good, bombardment not too good. The rest is all enough for a alpha account. Let's get here. As you can see, I do need to activate my shield. One million and a half. That's good. As you can see, you can make uh, a bit of extra extra money destroying the the extraction nodes. Now for the bio, let's see what we get here. hate micro warp drive because of this. Five million. Let's loot it. And let's finish this little Abyss walkthrough. <laughs> Record my drones. There we have it. Three tier 2 Abyss exotic runs uh, without having to go to the to the station for repair and that's how confident I am on this fit it's an alpha friendly fit it's even better with Omega the DPS helps a lot for optimal speed runs and let's go back to Dodixi <laughs> Let's see, we got 52 million, but uh, without considering my missiles, 51, 51 I think, no, 52, 
but we got even more because we got the Kikimora bl blueprint. If I recall correctly, you can sell this for around 20 million or craft it and still get a lot of profit. I probably got some skill books too. Let's check it out. Small precursor. Uh, not really that interesting, but it helps. Some useless blueprints. At, le I, at least I think it is. I only focus on the ship's ones. Let's stack it all. There we go. Uh, usually I get a lot of more uh, better filaments. But this was a good run. Let's make a little calculation here. So it was 52 divided by... Three. So we got around 17 million per run, which, on my at least on my experience, it's way better than the cruiser runs. So just a few aft uh, afterwards here. Firstly, uh, sorry if I lost myself on my commentaries. Like I said, uh, English is my secondary language. I'm quite nervous because this is my first time doing this, and since this feat is so manual piloting intensive I've got even more uh, lost in the commentary but like I wanted to prove it's an alpha fit that can get your uh, fund your Omega we got 52 million in around I think less than an hour you have one month to farm it as long as you already have Omega <laughs> If you don't have Omega, you can still farm it with uh, a bit less uh, optimal performance because the weaker skills. But it's a fit that works. Now, if you want to bling it a bit more, I totally recommend the... Uh, let's show you a small shield booster. Simulate. And fit module. Uh, this one. I totally recommend this shield booster it will make the fit completely stable you can actually you can't ride ah because i'm alpha right uh anyways you can remove this it will be stay uh, non-stable but you won't be needing to activate this all the time and here you can actually enhance your dps you can use the small bay loading accelerator for missiles which I think will give you around... Uh, let's show you here. It's not a great increase. It's around 10% of your missile damage alone. Oops. It's the one, sorry. And I can't. I think it bugged. Let me simulate again. Remove it and the loading. Yeah, it, it did bug. As you can see, it fit perfectly. Give a little bit of DPS. Better if you have tier 2 missiles as Omega. Or, I don't know if an Alpha can do it. But I really did like the scope for the drones. Yeah, I don't think Alpha can actually fit it. But personally, I felt that this helps a lot while dealing with Damavex, even the Vedmac, because drones usually stay a bit far away behind them. So this 20% increase in optimal range for the drones actually increased the damage apl application of the drones a bit. So anyways, I'm, I'm getting out of topic here. I'm, I forgot how to say it, but I'm taking more time than, than YouTube allows, I think. But anyways, here is my little worm fit. I hope you can get your Omega solely by using it. And see you around at EVE. Have a good day and good luck making this work for you.